Hey guys, in this video I will show you how to transfer poses from any image to QN image generation using QN image union diffsynth LoRa. Not just poses, it can also transfer image composition from images to generation using various control signals. But in this video, we will only focus on one control signal, which is called open pose. So let's get started and also make sure your comfy UI is up to date. The download link for the LoRa is in the description, so let's open this link for downloading the LoRa. Here we go. The LoRa we need to download is this. QN Image Union Diffsynth LoRa dot Safatensors. Use the download button to get this. In my case, I have already done it. So let's see where we need to put the LoRa inside Comfy UI. So let's open the downloads folder. Here is the LoRa. Let's select and cut it. Then open the Comfy UI models folder, find and open the folder called LoRa's and paste the files there. Now, let's switch to Comfy UI. Let's refresh Comfy UI by pressing R on the keyboard. So guys, before we start using the LoRa, we need to install some custom node packs. Let's see what those custom node packs are. So, let's open the Comfy UI manager and then again, open the custom nodes manager. The first custom node pack we need is Comfy UI's control net auxiliary. So, search for it, then install it. Make sure you are installing the correct one. In my case, I've already done it. Also, to make sure this video is completely useful for you, I suggest installing two other custom node packs. One is RG3Comfy. So search for it and install that. And another custom node pack we need is Comfy UI KJ nodes. So also search for it and install it as well. Now, let's close the Comfy UI manager and start building the workflow we need. Comfy UI already provides a template for using QN Image Union Diffsynth LoRa. So, Let's open that template and add some modifications to it. So on the left side, click on the templates button, then click on image. In this section, scroll down and look for QN image union control. Here it is. Let's click and open this template. Here we go. Let's take a look at the workflow and start adding the modifications we need. In the load diffusion model node, I will be using the FP8 format of QN image. Next, in the LoRa Loader Model Only node, make sure you have selected QN Image Union Diffsith LoRa. And in the Load Clip node, I will be using the FP8 format of the text encoder. Nothing needs to be changed in this node. For Load VAE, just like before, there's no need to change anything. On the top side, there is a LoRa Loader in Bypass mode. Let's unbypass it by pressing Ctrl plus B. This node is added for loading Lightning LoRas. In this node, select the Lightning model you are going to use, I will be using the 8-step model, which is better than the 4-step model. So, let's select 8 steps. Next, in model sampling aura flow, I am going to use a shift value of 4. In the K sampler, I will be using 10 steps, which is better than 8 steps in some cases. For the CFG value, use 1. For other settings, nothing needs to be changed. Now, let's move to the bottom side. Here is the node for loading images. We are going to use this node for importing images to transfer poses. So. Let's select an image. I'm going to use this photo. Click Open. Now, let's move the Preview Image node here and delete the Canny node and also the Group node. Then, let's move the Scale Image to Total Pixels node to here. Let's adjust it even further. Now, for extracting poses from the image, we can use a node called Open Pose Pose. So, double-click an empty area and search for Open Pose Pose. Here it is. Let's click on it. We can use this node to extract poses from any images, but in some cases, its pose extractions are not the best. For better pose extraction, we can use a DW pose estimator. So let's use that node. Now let's connect the image output of the load image node to the image input of the DW pose estimator. Then connect the image output of the DW pose estimator to the image input of the scale image to total pixels node. In the DW pose estimator, we are going to use a resolution of 1024. Now, let me simplify this workflow so you can understand what is happening here. The DW pose estimator will extract the pose from the imported image. Then it gets scaled to one megapixel by the scale image to total pixels node. Then, the extracted pose will go into the VAE encode, which will transform the pose image into a latent representation. Then it is given to the positive and negative conditioning of the reference latent nodes, and those nodes will combine the latent representation and text conditioning. Finally, it is sent to the diffusion model, which will use it as a guide for image generation. Now let's generate an image. I've prepared a prompt on my notepad, so let's copy that into the positive prompt field. 
The text is, a man standing on a tip of a boat now, let's add a node for comparing the generated image with the extracted pose of the imported image. So, double-click and search for image compare. Click on it. Then, let's connect the image output of the VAE decode node to the image A input of the image comparer. Then, let's connect the image output of the scale image to total pixels node to the image B input of the image comparer. This can be a difficult task because as I zoom out, you might not be able to read the nodes. So, in these kinds of cases, we can use the set and get nodes. Let's add a set node first. Double click and search for set node. Here it is, let's click on it. Then, let's connect the image output of the scale image to total pixels node to the input of the set node. Then, in the constant field, let's type pose underscore extract and press enter. Then, let's minimize the node by clicking on the small gray dot. Next, let's move to the top where the image comparer is added. Double click and search for get node and click on it. In the constant field, select pose underscore extract. Then, connect the image output to the image B input of the image comparer. That's it. Now, let's run the workflow and see the result. The generation is finished. Let's take a look at the image. As you can see here, the image looks really good and the pose transfer is successful. If we take a look at the image comparer, we can see that the model and the LoRa did a good job, but there are some smaller differences when comparing it with the image we imported for pose extraction. So guys, we can't expect a complete pose transfer, but we still get a useful result. Now, let's try another pose. Let's choose this image, click Open, and copy the prompt I wrote for this pose into the positive prompt field. Now, let's run the workflow and wait for the result. The generation is finished. Let's take a look at the image. The generated image looks good, but when we compare it with the pose we extracted, the pose of the generated image is slightly different. Her left leg is almost in the correct position, but her right leg is not, although her hands are in the correct position. Anyway, let's move on and try another pose. So, here is the thing you need to know. It also supports multiple people. Let's open an image with two people in it. Let's choose this one and click Open. I wrote a prompt for this pose, so let's copy that from my notepad to the positive prompt field. Then, let's run the workflow. Here we go, the generation is finished. Let's take a look at it. As you can see here, the model did a pretty good job in this case. If we do a comparison with the extracted pose from the imported image, we can see the result is really good. Now, let's try another image with three people in it. We'll choose this one and click Open. I have a prompt for this pose on my notepad, so let's copy and paste it into the positive prompt field. Now, let's run the workflow and see the result. Here we go, the generation is finished. I would call it a fine result. There are differences from the extracted pose, but it's really nice that the model can handle multiple poses with some minor mistakes. Now, let's move on to the next topic. What if we want only one human pose from an image with multiple people in it? I've already talked about this in another video, so let's review it again. What we need to do is create a mask. So in the Load Image node, right-click and open the Mask Editor. Then, using the Mask tool, paint around the person you want to extract the pose of. After that, click on the Save button. For now, I'm not going to do another image generation, so let's mute the K sampler. Double-click and search for Join Image with Alpha, then click on it. Then, connect the image output of the Load Image node to the image input of the Join Image with Alpha node. Then, Connect the mask output of the load image node to the alpha input of the join image with alpha node. Finally, connect the image output of the join image with alpha node to the image input of the DW pose estimator. That's it. Now, let's run the workflow. Here is the result and we've made a mistake, we got the wrong poses. So what we need to do is invert the mask. Let's see how we can do that. In the load image node, right click and open the mask editor. Then click on the invert button here we go, the mask is inverted. Now let's save it. Now let's click on the Run button and see the result. Okay, here we go, the pose we wanted was successfully extracted. Now we can use it for the next image generation. So, guys, that's all I have to say. Play with these settings and see for yourselves how good this Laura is. That's it. See you soon with another video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel.